This next section is on a step-by-step -step approach to rhythm interpretation, and you'll find this in your workbook on page 45. And uh, we'll look at um, heart rate, P waves, PR interval, QRS duration, ratio of P waves to QRSs, uh, rhythm, uh, is it, we'll talk about rhythm in a minute, and then finally we take all of that information and uh, formulate an interpretation. It's important to use a step-by-step -step approach because if you do that and you do it consistently, you'll get quick at it. And number two, you're much more likely to have an accurate inter interpretation if you're um, looking at it in a stepwise approach as opposed to looking at rhythms and trying to recognize them by pattern, i.e. you see a rhythm uh, and you think, I've seen this pattern before, this is what it is. That's when makes mistakes happen. So we'll start with heart rate. This is important because um, if we're dealing with someone who's hemodynamically unstable, we can get a, uh, a rough idea uh, right in the primary survey after we've ensured that airway is patent, that they're breathing, and that there's uh, no external hemorrhage, whether the heart rate is contributing to this hemodynamic instability. So if they're bradycardic or tachycardic, then we look at that as a possible cause. If the heart rate's normal, then we have to look at other causes, such as pump failure or volume depletion. When we look at P waves, we want to know, are they present? Are they regular? And do they all look alike? If they're present regular, they all look alike, and there's one P wave preceding each QRS, then we're dealing with a sinus rhythm. If they're absent or inverted or retrograde, then we may be looking at a junction rhythm, or if it happens with a single beat, we may be looking at a premature junction of beat. Um, if they're fibrillatory waves or flutter waves, we may be dealing with some kind of other rhythm. Um, fibrillatory waves for the atria are, are really indistinguishable from um, artifacts, so we'll talk about that a little later when we talk about atrial fib. Are the P waves buried in the preceding T waves or not clearly discernible? If we're dealing with uh, tachycardic rhythms such as supraventricular tachycardia, it's important to look at the preceding T wave and see if there are uh, notches or P waves superimposed on the downslope of the T wave. Um, and if we see that consistently, then we're likely dealing with um, some evidence of atrial depolarization there. And does artifact obscure the P waves? And if that's the case, then we need to troubleshoot and either help the patient to uh, keep still so we can get a good tracing or perhaps look at moving the electrodes to another place, perhaps away from large muscle mass to get a clear tracing. Then we look at the PR interval. We want to know is the PR interval normal or delayed. If it's normal, then we know that the, the impulse is traveling from the SA node through the AV node down the bundle of his at a normal pace, and there's nothing interfering with that conduction. If it's greater than 0 0.20 second, then we know that there's some sort of delay happening at the uh, AV node or perinodal tissue. And this is an example of a um, prolonged PR interval where, and, and I try to find a P wave that, that falls on the dark line, so we can measure it there, and then find the QRS. And you can see clearly that this PR interval is greater than five small squares. So it's greater than uh, 0 0.20 second, and that means the PR interval is prolonged, and this would be an example of a first degree AV block. Then we look at the QRS duration, and all we're interested in is the QRS duration, not its shape, not whether it's positive or negative, just its duration. Is it less than 0.12 second, or is it equal or greater than 0.12 second? So is it narrow or is it wide? If it's narrow, we know the impulse is traveling down the uh, bundle of hiss and bundle branches simultaneously, and that's good. If it's wide, then we know that um, the impulse may be blocked in one of those bundle branches, um, so we look for P waves preceding each YQRS, and that would tell us it's a sinus rhythm with aberrancy. The other cause of a YQRS uh, would be that the, there's a focus coming from the ventricle, and that can happen with a single premature ventricular complex. Um, if the focus fires in sequence, we may have an ventricular rhythm or ventricular tachycardia. Some other causes of YQRS complexes include uh, drug effect and electrolyte imbalance, so we'll talk about that more later. And then we look at the ratio of P waves to QRSs. Normally, the ratio of P waves to QRSs would be one-to-one, -one, so P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. Here we have an instance where there's one, two, three P waves per QRS. That's a three-to-one ratio. We see that in heart blocks. And then finally, we look at rhythm, and is it regular, regularly irregular, or irregularly irregular? And when we take all that information, um, it helps us formulate an interpretation. So we put it all together, look at the rules, and when we describe the rhythms, we always start by describing the underlying rhythm first, then the heart rate, and then the funny-looking beats. So in this case, we would say, for example, this is a normal sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 74 with 8 to 10 PVCs per minute. And we do that consistently with all rhythm interpretation.